The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell, Chapter 4, The Land of Stories. Alex had been acting strange all week. Connor had noticed right away because she wasn't as talkative and upbeat as she usually was. Instead, she was very quiet and looked like she was in a deep state of confusion. When they ate breakfast, she barely acknowledged it when her brother said, Good morning. During school, she stopped raising her hand as much. After school, she barely said a word to Connor while they walked home, and as soon as they got home, Alex would run up the stairs and lock herself in her bedroom for the rest of the day. Are you feeling okay? Connor eventually asked her. You seem different. Yes, I'm just tired, Alex said. Connor knew she must be tired because she didn't seem to sleep anymore. Every time he had gotten up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water or use the bathroom that week, the lights in his sister's bedroom were still on, and he could hear her rustling about inside, working on something. He didn't have to be a genius to know that his sister was dealing with more than just insomnia. He had seen enough health videos at school to know that girls his sister's age were expected to start going through mood swings and changes, but Alex had become another person entirely. Something very serious was bothering her, and she was keeping it to herself. Can I borrow some of your pencils? A wide-eyed and wide-awake Alex asked him late one night. It was like a peacock asking to borrow some feathers. He wasn't certain how to handle the request. Surely she wasn't still doing homework at this hour. Don't you have, like, hundreds? Connor asked her. Yes, but I've lost them all, she said. He shared the few that he had with her. Alex took them and quickly disappeared into her room again. She didn't even seem to mind that they were chewed on or were missing the erasers. The next night, Connor kept waking up to a peculiar humming sound coming from Alex's room. It was quiet, but had a strong vibration that he could feel as much as he could hear. Alex, Connor said, knocking on his sister's door. What is that sound? I'm trying to sleep and it's driving me crazy. It's just a bee. I shoot him out the window. A frantic Alex responded from behind the door. A bee? A puzzled Connor asked. Yes, a very big bee. It's a mating season, you know, so they're quite aggressive this time of year, Alex called out. Er, all right, Connor said and went to bed. But these happenings were nothing compared to the events during the next day at school. Can anyone tell me the names of the rivers that ran through ancient Mesopotamia? Miss Peter asked the class during a history lesson. As usual, she had no volunteers. Anyone? Miss Peters asked. Everyone was looking at Alex and expecting her hand to shoot up into the air any second. But Alex was just staring at the floor. She wasn't paying any attention to anything. The Tigris and Euphrates, Miss Peter informed the class. Can anyone tell me what the area between these two rivers is believed to be? She asked the question in Alex's direction, but it was no use. Alex was lost in her own thoughts. Miss Bailey, perhaps you know the answer, Miss Peters pleaded. To what? asked Alex, snapping out of her trance. The question, Miss Peters said. Oh, Alex said, no, I don't. She rested her head on her hand and continued staring at the floor. Miss Peters and the rest of the class didn't understand what was happening. Alex always knew the answers. How was the class going to function without her? The cradle of civilization, Miss Peters told the class, answering the question. Many believe that mankind started there. Miss Bailey! Alex sat up quickly in her seat. The most shocking thing had ever happened in the classroom had occurred. Alex Bailey had dozed off in the middle of class. I, I, I'm so sorry, Miss Peters, Alex pleaded. I don't know what came over me. I haven't been sleeping very well lately. Miss Peters was staring at her as if she had just witnessed a gruesome animal give birth. That, that's all right, the teacher said. Do you need to see the nurse? No, I'm fine. I'm just a little sleepy, Alex said. I promise that'll never happen again. Connor had been watching the whole thing like it was a train wreck. All he could do was shake his head. What had happened to Alex? Where was his real sister? She was turning into him. The strange humming sound Connor had heard the night before suddenly filled the classroom. Alex sat straight up in her seat, anxious. Her eyes grew larger than they had ever been before. A few of the other students looked around, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. Can anyone tell me the technologies of Mesopotamia brought into the Bronze Age? Miss Peters asked, oblivious to the humming. Anyone? She asked again. Alex's hand shot straight into the air. Yes, Miss Bailey! Miss Peters happily called on her. 
May I use the restroom? Alex peeped. Miss Peter sighed with disappointment. Yes, you may, she replied. Before she had finished granting Alex permission to leave the classroom, Alex already jumped out of her seat, grabbed her school bag, and headed out the door. Connor watched his sister leave. His eyes were bulging with suspicion. Why had she taken her backpack with her to the bathroom? He had to know what was going on. He was going to confront his sister here and now at school, where she had no place to run and no bedroom to lock herself into. Miss Peters, Connor called out. Yes, Mr. Bailey, Miss Peters asked. Can I see the nurse? He asked. What for? She asked. He hadn't thought this far into his plan. Oh, my elbow hurts, Connor said. Miss Peters stared at him blankly. She may have believed him more if he had told her he was a dinosaur. Your elbow hurts? She asked. Yes, really badly. I banged it on my desk and now it's just killing me, Connor said, clutching his perfectly fine elbow. Miss Peters squinted and rolled her eyes, two of her trademark indications of annoyance and one expression. Fine, the teacher said, but I'm going to have to write you a pass. Connor was out the door before she could finish her sentence. Meanwhile, Alex burst into the girl's restroom. She quickly looked underneath all the stalls to make sure she was alone. She zipped open her school bag, pulled out the land of stories, and set it on top of the sink. It was glowing and humming more than ever. Please turn off. Please turn off, Alex said to the book. I'm at school. I can't get caught with you here. The sound and shine slowly faded, and the land of stories returned to being just a normal book. Alex sighed with relief, but panicked once more when someone else suddenly charged into the restroom. It was her brother. Bees don't have mating seasons, Alex, Connor said with a tightened brow and his hands on his hips. I looked it up. They come from colonies just like ants. Even the big ones. They don't have schedules. Connor, what are you doing in here? You can't be in the girl's bathroom, Alex shouted. I'm not leaving until you tell me what is going on, Connor demanded. You've been lying to me all week. I know something's up. I have twin tuition. Twin tuition? Alex asked sarcastically. I made it up, Connor said. It means I know when something's bothering you, even if you tell me nothing is. At first, I thought you were just having girl issues. Oh, Connor, please, Alex interjected. Then after all that strange buzzing noises and late nights, I figured mom has to must have gotten you a cell phone and didn't want me to know about it. But then I remembered you have no friends, so who would be calling and texting you? Alex grunted. Now, he was being accusative and rude. But I know you well enough to know that it would take something much worse to make you act this way, Connor said. You're quiet, you don't know any of Miss Peter's answers, and you're falling asleep in class. You're acting like me, so just tell me what's your problem. Alex didn't say a word. She just stared at her feet. She was so ashamed at how she had been acting, but she knew no one would believe her if she told them why she had been acting that way. Except maybe her brother. Connor looked around the girl's bathroom. Gosh, it's so nice in here. The boy's bathroom looks like the bottom of a hazardous waste barrel. Wait, why do you have Grandma's book with you? I don't know what's going on. Alex burst into the loud and awkward tears once cried when exhausted and overly stressed. Connor took a step back from his own protection. He had never seen his sister so hysterical. At first I thought I was hallucinating, Alex said. I thought maybe I was having a reaction to something Grandma made us for dinner. That was the first night it happened, but then it kept happening, so I know it wasn't a reaction. Alex, what are you talking about? Connor asked. The Land of Stories book, Alex yelled. It glows. It hums. Every day it gets louder and brighter. I've lost so much sleep trying to figure out how and why it does it. It breaks all the laws of science. Uh, Connor said with a raised eyebrow. Alex, I think we should go see the nurse. You must think I'm insane, Alex told him. Anybody would come to that conclusion unless they sell it for themselves. But I promise I'm telling the truth. I don't think you're insane, Connor lied, starting to think his sister was definitely going insane. It happens once or twice a day, Alex said. I was afraid mom would find it, so I brought it to school. The last thing she needs to worry about is a possessed book lying around her house. Connor didn't know what to say. He briefly imagined the future trips he and his mother would take to see sister in the local asylum and the wisecracks he would make about the cool white jacket she got to wear. Clearly, his sister had lost her mind, but after all they'd been through, he couldn't blame her. 
He kept thinking about how his dad would have handled the situation. What story would he have used to comfort Alex? Alex, Connor said with understanding eyes, we've been through a lot in the last year. It's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed and the humming started again. They looked back at the land of stories on the sink. To Alex's relief and Connor's horror, it was glowing. Connor jumped back against the wall as if he were in the presence of an explosive. The land of stories book, Connor yelled. It glows. It hums. I told you, Alex said. Connor's mouth was open so wide it was almost touching his chest. Is it radioactive? He asked. I doubt it, Alex told him. She reached for the book. Don't touch it, Alex, Connor shouted. Relax, Connor, Alex reassured him. I've been dealing with this all week. Using one finger, she flicked the book open and the entire restroom was illuminated. All the illustrations and writing had disappeared and the pages seemed to be made of pure light. Alex leaned closer to the book. Listen, do you hear that? She asked. I can hear birds and leaves. I've never heard sounds come out of it before. Connor edged away from the wall and leaned down with his sister. The sounds of birds chirping and trees blowing and the wind echoed off the tile and the porcelain in the bathroom. How is this possible? Connor asked. Are you sure it doesn't have batteries or something? <sighs> My most educated analysis with all means of science and technology in mind is that it's magic, Alex said. There's no other possible explanation. Do you think Grandma knows about this? Connor asked. She had the book for years before she gave it to us. Do you think this has happened before? I don't think Grandma would have given it to us if she'd known what it was capable of, Alex said. Huh. You're right, Connor said. She still cuts up my meat when she comes for dinner because she doesn't trust me with knives. There's more, Alex said. She reached out into her school bag and pulled out a pencil. Carefully, she placed the pencil on the open book. It quickly sank into the glowing page and disappeared. Wh where did it go? Connor sputtered in utter astonishment. I don't know, Alex said. I've been dropping things into it all week. Pencils, books, dirty socks, and anything else I could find that I knew I wouldn't miss. I think it may be some kind of portal. A portal to what? Connor asked. Alex didn't have an answer. Of course, there was one location that she had hoped it might lead to. The twins leaned down even closer to the book, their noses almost touching it. They had to squint because it was so bright. Suddenly, a bright red bird flew out of the book. The twins screamed and ran around the room in panic. They bumped into each other, into the walls, and into the sinks as the bird zoomed above them. It was just as panicked as they were. Finally, Connor opened the bathroom door and the bird flew out of the room and into the world. You didn't say things come out of it too, Connor yelled. I didn't know. That's the first time that's happened, Alex yelled back at him. The book slowly dimmed and returned to normal. Connor's head was spinning. He couldn't believe all things he had just witnessed. No wonder Alex was having such a rough week. He now felt his own sanity might be slipping too. We have to get rid of this book, Connor exclaimed. After school, we should ride our bikes down to the creek and toss it so no one ever finds it. We can't get rid of it, Alex said. It's Grandma's book. It's been in our family forever. Birds are flying out of it, Alex. I'm sure she'll understand, he said. What if a lion or a shark comes out of it? Next. I know, it drives you crazy when you don't know about stuff, but this is one matter you need to let go. It could be more dangerous than we think. Who knows what could happen? She knew her brother was right, but there was something about the whole situation that intrigued her past the point of reason. I think you're overreacting, Alex said. I don't want to get rid of it until I know more about it. She closed the book, put it back in her school bag, and walked out of the restroom. Alex, don't walk away. Alex? Connor called out after her. The twins returned to class. All the students were silently reading their history books. Alex, we need to talk, Connor whispered. Mr. and Mrs. Bailey, please have a seat and read the chapter on Mesopotamia, Miss Peters ordered from her desk. Yes, Miss Peters, Alex said, and then turned back to her brother and whispered, We'll talk about it later, Connor. Connor let out a sound similar to something a bear would make. Mr. Bailey, how was the nurse? Miss Peters asked. There was no need. My elbow started feeling much better before I got there, Connor said, holding the other elbow that the one he had previously claimed was hurting. Miss Peters raised an eyebrow so high it was almost above her. 
The twins sat at their desks and opened their history books, but neither of them could actually read. Their thoughts were so loud it was impossible to focus on anything. Connor kept looking up at his sister, hoping she'd turn around so he could make some sort of gesture to make her understand how serious the situation was. Alex could feel her brother's eyes on the back of her head, so she remained facing forward, set on ignoring him. And then the worst possible thing that could have happened happened. The land of stories began humming in the quiet classroom from the inside of Alex's bag. She looked back at her brother, finally making eye contact. What were they going to do? Miss Peters had been so caught up in her lesson plan that she hadn't heard it earlier. Was it possible for her to miss it again? What is that noise? Miss Peters demanded. All the students were looking around the room, wondering the same thing. Alex and Connor were terrified. They felt like their stomachs had fallen out of their bodies. Miss Peters got up from her desk and started searching around the room. Like a coyote sniffing out its prey, she walked up and down the aisles of desks, getting closer and closer to Alex. If anyone knows what that is, they better tell me before I find it, the teacher warned. Alex could feel her heartbeat in her throat. There was no telling what would happen if her teacher found the book. She could only imagine what a fuss the school would make of the discovery. Perhaps they called the local news station. Perhaps government officials would take the book away for experimental testing. Perhaps her family would be taken away because they had been in such close contact with it. Miss Peters arrived at Alex's desk. Miss Bailey, is there something in your bag? She asked her. All the color in Alex's face drained away. She needed a miracle. Suddenly, a large history book flew from the back of the classroom and hit Miss Peters on the head leaving a large dent in her curly hair. The entire class turned to the back of the room and saw Connor's extended hand. He had just thrown a book at their teacher. Miss Peter's face turned bright red. A charging bull would have seemed harmless compared to the way she was looking at Connor. Mr. Bailey, what on earth has gotten into you? She screamed. The whole school must have heard her. For a brief moment, Connor saw his entire life flash before his eyes. He honestly thought he was about to die. His face was so white, he was almost transparent. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Peters, Connor whimpered. There was a bee. I didn't mean to hit you, he lied. Steam was practically coming out of the teacher's ears and nostrils. Detention, Mr. Bailey, for the rest of this week, next week, and the week after that, Miss Peters said. She returned to her desk and immediately began filling out every detention slip she had in her possession. Thankfully, the room had become so tense that everyone had forgotten about the humming sound, and even more thankfully, they hadn't noticed it slowly faded away. Connor's mission was accomplished. He knew he'd done the right thing, not as a student, but as a brother. Soon the bell rang and all the students left their desks and filed out of the classroom except for Connor, who remained seated. Alex walked up to him. Thanks for that she said. You owe me one, Connor told her. She nodded and then left the classroom to walk home alone. Connor remained seated until Miss Peters finished filling out the detention slips. Come here, Mr. Bailey, she said. Connor approached her desk as if it were on fire. Throwing things in my classroom will never be tolerated. Do you understand me, Mr. Bailey? She said, heavily pronouncing each syllable of each word. One more incident like that, and I'll have you expelled. She gulped and nodded. She handed him a large stack of detention slips. Your mother will need to sign all of these, Miss Peters told him. He nodded again. I'm really sorry, Connor said. I hope I didn't hurt you. He was so genuine that even Miss Peters could sense his regret. She knew, though, that deep down, Connor had always been a good kid. A horrible student, but a good kid nonetheless. It's all right, Mr. Bailey, she said. I believe I may have underestimated the effect your family situation has had on you and your sister. I'm going to contact your mother with the list of different after-school programs I think you and your sister should take part in, as well as a list of self-help books that may be beneficial. Connor nodded in agreement. I think if you had some place to escape to once in a while, it'd help you deal with whatever you're going through, she said. Connor continued nodding. If there was ever a time in his life when he needed an escape from reality, it was now, and he was sure his sister would agree. And then, like lightning, the thought hit him. 
Oh my God, Alex, Connor thought. She's going to travel into the book herself. That's why she's been holding on to it. That's why she's refused to get rid of it. Connor dropped all the detention slips and bolted towards the door. I'm sorry, Miss Peters. I can't go to detention today. Something just came up. Mr. Bailey, get back here right now, she yelled after him, but it was too late. He was already gone. Connor was running as fast as he could down the street. Alex had gotten so much of a head start. Would he make it home in time to stop her? What if she was already gone by time he got there? What if he never saw her again? His feet began to ache. A horrible pain grew in his side, and his heart felt like it was beating out of his chest. But he continued running. He just prayed he wasn't too late. It hadn't been more than five minutes since Alex had gotten home when the land of stories began acting up again. She ran up the stairs to her bedroom and promptly shut the door behind her. Alex took the land of stories out of her school bag and placed it on her bedroom floor. She opened the cover and her room lit up from its golden glow. She smiled to herself. Alex had always hoped something magical would happen to her, and now something finally was. She pulled out a pencil from her school bag and placed it on top of the book and watched it disappear. Alex looked around the room for another disposable thing she could drop into the book. She was out of pencils, and the books left in her bookshelves were the ones she wanted to keep. She looked down at her school bag. She did have plenty of school bags. She placed her whole bag on top of the book and watched it, too, slowly sink into the storybook. Where were all these things going? Was it transporting them to another part of the world? Would she find a pile of her school supplies in India or China? Or did the book send the items someplace else entirely? Was it possible they were going to another world? Was the world that Alex secretly hoped for? There was only one way to find out. It was an idea she had managed to suppress all week. What if she went into the book? No, she couldn't possibly do such a stupid thing. What if she never came out? But what if she stuck her hand into the book? What would happen? Would it hurt? Would her whole arm disappear? Alex's curiosity overruled her caution. She sat on her knees and bent over the book very carefully. Alex started with just her fingertips. So far, so good. There was no pain. She only felt a warm, tingly sensation. Alex reached farther. She was wrist deep now and still nothing had happened that worried her. She went farther. The book was up to her elbow. If the book hadn't been there, her hand would have surely be sticking through the ceiling downstairs. Alex leaned forward even farther, almost shoulder deep into the book. She moved her arm around, seeing if there was anything to grab on the inside. Suddenly, her bedroom door burst open and Connor ran inside, sweating and out of breath. Alex, don't do it. He completely startled her. Alex lost her balance and fell headfirst into the book. Alex! Connor cried out to his sister. He jumped to the ground, trying to grab her foot before she disappeared entirely. But it was too late. Alex had fallen into the land of stories. <laughs>